Hi there, welcome to our YouTube channel. We hope that our messages have brought you so much healing and hope for your life. I'm also believing that you've been inspired to live a godly life. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. We love you and we hope that you will stay. Now we post these messages every Wednesday of every week. If you don't want to miss out on anything, please go ahead and subscribe, click over there and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything. We believe that your life will not remain the same again. God bless you. I have to say this. In the first service and in this service, I just sense the presence of God here in a special way. And uh, I have a strong conviction in my heart that God wants to do something special in your life today. God wants to touch you. God wants to heal you. God wants to set you free. God wants to draw you to himself. If you're not yet born again, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, God wants you to have a relationship with him today. Today. And uh, it's a special moment because God is with us. Today we are concluding our teachings on the reason, reason for faith, for our faith in God. And uh, when we began talking about the reason for our faith, you know, we addressed the question of why trust the Bible. We also talked about why Jesus is the only way to God and does science contradict faith in God and why does a loving God let people go to hell? We talked about that last weekend. It's very important for us to explain why we believe what we believe because Apostle Peter says, be prepared always to give an answer to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope you have. And we do that with gentleness, with gentleness rather. We do that not to show off, but just to tell people that this is the reason we believe what we believe. Today, as we conclude our teachings about the reason for our faith, why we believe what we believe, we want to address another important question that many people sometimes have, and including myself, I have asked that question sometimes. Uh, but before I, I talk about what we are addressing today, let me read uh, to you his story. And it's a true story, it's what happened. In December 2004, a massive tsunami killed more than 250,000 people around the rim or the coastline of the Indian Ocean. Over the following weeks, newspapers and magazines were full of letters and articles asking, where was God when all this happened? One reporter wrote, if God is God, then he is not good. If God is good, then he is not God. You can't have, have it both ways, especially after the Indian Ocean catastrophe. Two days ago, I received a WhatsApp message from one of the young people who looks up to me as his son in the faith, his spiritual son. And he, the message came in at night saying, Papa, he calls me Papa, we've lost a baby. And so I called him to find out the details, and he told me the baby died in the womb, and the baby died a month ago. They got to know of it two days ago when they visited a medical center. Thank God, even though that reporter wondered where God was, thank God he protected the mom. Because a baby dying in the womb um, a month ago, and she's still alive today with no infection. That is God at work. Maybe as I'm speaking right now, you're going through fire. You're facing a situation that is traumatizing you. Maybe you're carrying a terminal illness in your body. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost a relationship that you cherished. Maybe you have lost a marriage. Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe you've, uh, you've lost a, a business. Maybe you've lost your money. Maybe you, you've lost a friend. Maybe you've lost a child. 
Maybe you're being persecuted. Maybe you're, you're, you're experiencing rejection from your own family or from your, 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 your parents. Maybe your, your child has rejected you and they no longer treat you as their father or as their mom. Maybe you feel you are alone. Maybe you feel you in, a, in, 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 in the darkest valley. I have sometimes wondered, where is God? Especially when I'm going through hardships. So the question that we want to address today, today is, why does a good God allow us to suffer? Why does a good God allow people to go through suffering? Because he is good, but also he is the almighty. He is the most powerful God. He is the all-knowing God. He is the God who does the impossible. But why does he allow us to go through suffering? Why? Maybe you're asking that question right now. Why am I going through what I'm going through now? Why is my family going through what they are go what we are going through right now? Why is all this happening to me? And sometimes people ask themselves, what is wrong with me? Am I don't I pray like my friends pray? I attend church regularly. I tithe. I read my Bible. I'm living a pure life, a pure life, but why does God, why has he allowed me to go through suffering? That question doesn't offend God, by the way. Here's what I want to say before we delve into why God allows people to go through suffering, why God allows us, a good God allows us to go through suffering. I want to state, state it this morning with the authority that I have as a servant of God, that Jesus, that God is good regardless of what we go through in life. Because that's who he is. By nature, God is good. We may never understand why we are going through the suffering we are going through. We may never, but God remains good. And I also have good news for you. God is not aloof to your suffering. God is not um, distant, distant from you when you're going through that suffering. He is not. He has compassion for us. God has empathy for us. God knows. God sees. And no suffering takes God by, suffering, by surprise. There's no situation we go through in life that catches God of God. God never comes to a point where he says, oh, Auntie Florence, Minyang is going through that suffering. I wish I'd known I would have stopped it. Nothing takes God by surprise. So before we address the question of why does God allow, allow people to go through suffering, why does he allow a good God allow us to suffer, allow suffering? I want to just mention some sources of suffering. Where suffering comes from. Number one, as a source of suffering, why we suffer is because we live in a broken world. And what I mean by bro a broken world is we live in a world that is not perfect. We live in a, in a wild world that is decaying. Friends, God, I want you to know, actually you already know, but I'm just reminding you. God did not, did not create an imperfect world. God created a perfect world. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1, I think verse 31, it is recorded that when God saw all that he had created, it was very good. God created everything good, everything perfect. Because our God is a God who is good. Good. No evil comes from God. No evil is associated with God. But what corrupted the world, what made the world imperfect is the fall of man, is sin. God had told man, 
do not eat the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden. I'm, I'm not allowing you. I'm not permitting you to eat that fruit, the fruit of that tree. But man, when Satan deceived him, gave him to that temptation, ate the, the fruit of the tree that was forbidden, and as a result, he fell. Man became a sinner. Now, the corruption you see in the world, the decay you see in the world, the problems you see and, and we experience in our world are a result of sin. There are consequences of sin. As a matter of fact, the first death that is recorded in the Bible happened after the fall when Cain, the older son of Adam and Eve, killed Abel, his younger brother. By the way, everything was, came under curse because of the fall. So we live in a broken world. Calamities happen. Uh, catastrophes happen. People die. People fall sick. Mud, mud slides like you hear of in, you know, um, you, 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 you sometimes is, they're, they're reported in the newspapers. You know, they, are, they, they occur in places like uh, Eastern Uganda, Mbale there. They are as a result of the fall of sin that corrupted the world. Another source of suffering is wrong choices. And wrong choices include sinful choices, wicked choices. For example, people who rob others, people who murder others, people who grab other people's property, land, whatever. People who break into other people's houses. People who embezzle funds, public funds, and cause everyone to suffer. You know what I'm talking about, Ugandans? You go to public hospitals and there are no, no, there's no medicine. People who drive like maniacs on the road. And as a result, accidents are caused and people die. Lives are lost. People who oppress others, those are wrong choices that people make and it's a result of sin. I should say a manifestation of sin. But there are there, there, there choices, that, choices that people make that are not necessarily immoral. For example, if you choose to drink 10 bottles of cock, 10 cocks a day, you're going to, you will, you will destroy, you, you will harm your health. Not so. If you choose to overeat at a party as if there is no eating tomorrow, do you know what will happen? You'll have a stomach problem, a running stomach. You'll have the area. <laughs> okay? If you never exercise, you say, I'm healthy. You know what is going to happen? You're going to become sick and you're going to become weak. All right? I'm not going to say other things that will happen to you if you never exercise. Okay? If you say, today I want to show everybody that I'm the best driver in Uganda. And you, you, you step on the pedal and you drive at 180 kilometers per hour. Yet you know Ugandan roads are not built well. The vehicle will overturn. You will lose that vehicle and the worst can be losing your life or injuring yourself. So those are some of the bad choices that people make. They are not necessarily immoral, but people suffer. So there are people who bring suffering to other people, but there's suffering that we bring upon ourselves. But also Satan, my friends, Satan is the enemy of God and the enemy of God's people. That's why Jesus says, Satan, the thief, he's a thief who comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I thank God. I thank Jesus. He says, I have come so that you may have life and life in its fullness. Satan can torment you. Satan can torment your family. I'm telling you, Satan is a bad Satan. I, I, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm repeating what I'm saying. <laughs> Satan is a bad devil. <laughs> you know, he, 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 one day, as the angels of God appeared before, before God, the angels, the good angels appeared before God, 
Satan also came along. Appeared with those angels before God and say, God, you know, you, you, you know Job, a man called Job. God says, I, I know him. I, I know him. He's, he's righteous. He's upright. He's, he's a good man. He, he's devoted to me. He says, ah, he's devoted to you because you're protecting him. You're protecting his property. You're protecting his children. You touch his property. You touch his children. And you'll see whether he will continue to be devoted to you. So God says, okay, go touch his property. And his children don't touch him. So Satan, I tell you, Satan came down and tormented Job. Killed his children and also destroyed his wealth. Then he also went for his health. Because Satan hardly gives up. That's why we also don't give up. All right. We don't, you don't give up. When Satan torments you, don't give up. May I encourage you this morning. Stronger is the one who is in you than the one who is in the world. So why then does God, a good God, allow suffering, number one, to mature our faith, to mature our faith in him, to grow our faith in him, to refine our faith in him. This is what James chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces what? Perseverance. Perseverance mean it means you don't quit. It means you have the ability to endure all kinds of situations. It means you have the ability to stick to God, to cling to God. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature. Some Americans pronounce that word as mature. So let me pronounce like some Americans. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature <laughs> and complete, not lacking anything. Oh, God uses suffering as a tool to grow our faith in him. I have met people who are sold out for God. I have met people who are on fire for God. I have met people who passionately love Jesus. And when I find out the secret behind their passion for Jesus, they tell me, hey, pastor, I went through this, I went through that, I went through the other, I went through a lot of fire, but God enabled me to come out stronger. Listen, I've, I've actually uh, 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 seen people who, whose prayer life has grown as a result of going through suffering, and God gives them victory. I've seen people who love the church. They say, this is where I found hope. You know, because they went through something and God grant them, granted them victory. They went through a terrible situation. Hey, my friend, my brother, my sister, God uses suffering to grow our faith, to mature our faith in him. Job is, is, is again an example we can learn from. So when Satan attacked his health and the man was full of boils, every part of, of his body was Satan, Satan afflicted him with boils, with sores. And so his wife gave up. Job's wife came, comes to, to Job and he doesn't call him darling anymore because she was also suffering. So it's Job. Curse God and die. We've, we've had enough. We're fed up. It, it's, it's enough. We've had enough of this suffering. Curse suffering. Curse God and die. And Job says, you know what? Do you expect from God only what is good? Sometimes... God allows us to go through suffering as well. That is what a mature person says. That is the response of a mature person. If somebody is not strong in their faith, you know what will happen? When they fall sick of malaria, and it takes two weeks, they say, ah, 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 ah. no, 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 I don't want anything to do with God. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. 
All right? And people who are not mature in the faith are the ones who are running from church to church, looking for victory, looking for miracles, looking for, for healing. Let me tell you, the healer is in them, but they're looking for, for somebody to heal them. You know, they're looking for, church, for a church where there's no suffering. Some years ago, there was a church that, that was advertising itself, you know, on radio, telling people, come to, to this church, stop suffering. Now, if you know a church where, the, where people do not suffer, let me know so I can also go there. <laughs> but God uses suffering to mature us, come on, to cause us to become stronger. Before I go to the second point, I remember when I, our child had just, had just been born, um, my wife's midwife, I think, I, I think it's right for me to say our midwife, our midwife <laughs> told us, said, children are not meant to be exempt from, to be cushioned from suffering. You don't protect your children from suffering. Of course you do your best, but you don't. You know why? Because through, through, through suffering, children will grow up. Secondly, God, why does a good God allow suffering? It's because God uses suffering to discipline us to build our character. It is for discipline to build our character. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord, the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. From verse 10, and I will read it in the uh, in the Passion trans Translation. Our parents cor corrected us for the short time of our childhood as it seemed good to them. But God corrects us through our lives for our own good, giving us an invitation to share in his holiness. There you go. He dis disciplines us through suffering to build our character. Now all discipline seems to be more pain than pleasure at the time. Yet later, it will produce a transformation of character, bringing a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who yield to it. So be made strong even in your, in your weakness by lifting up your tired hands in prayer and worship and strengthen your weakness. For as you keep walking forward on God's paths of, 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 of all your stumbling, all your stumbling ways will be divinely healed. God uses suffering to correct us when we go astray because he's a loving father. Do you believe God is a loving father? He disciplines us to bring us back. He did that to the children of Israel. Whenever they sinned against God, he raised up a heathen army to discipline them so they would turn to him. I remember one time, so my, my, my brother-in-law, many people, many, many people shared with him the gospel, including his wife, my sister. But then the man never listened. His children got born again, but he never, he never listened <laughs> to the word of God. Never gave his life to Jesus. So one time, he and his friends went to a drinking pub. And as they were drinking, two of his friends picked a fight. And one killed the other. So the police came and arrested all of them. And they were thrown into prison. He was innocent. So he was released. After, when he was released... Them, I tell you, he didn't need anybody to preach to him. He ran, I'm telling you, he ran to the pastor in his village. Say, I'm giving my life to Jesus, no more drinking. God uses suffering to discipline us, to build our character. May I say at this point, God is more interested in your character than in what you do. God is more interested in you becoming who he wants you to become than what you do, than your abilities, than your works. Because it is you he wants to make like him. Wants you to become like him. Why does God, a good God, allow suffering? He's good, he's almighty, he's powerful. But why does he allow suffering? Has to go through suffering. Hey, thirdly, to display his power and glory. 
God does that to display his power and glory. In John chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, as Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from, from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. I also want to read Exodus chapter 7 from verse 3 to 5. God told uh, Moses and Aaron this. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my, my divisions, my people, the Israelites, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Let me tell you, friends, God can allow us to go through suffering so that he will prove himself the almighty God. He will prove him, himself the all-powerful God, the all-knowing God. You know what happens? When you are going through suffering and you call on the name of the Lord and you turn to God, God shows up and gives you your victory. And he will receive the glory. Yes, he will receive the glory. I remember Shirley and I, my wife, Shirley and I, calling on God. Day to day, for five years, for a child. You know, we had wanted to have a child as soon as we got married. So one year passed, second year passed, third year passed, fourth year passed, fifth year passed. At some point, my wife said, can we just adopt? And I said, not yet. We will adopt after we receive a biological child from God. And God saw us through. And God granted us victory. Let me tell you, our God is able to see you through. Our God is able to grant you victory. Our God is able to perform a miracle for you in that situation. You remember he parted the Red Sea? So the children of Israel could go, could walk through it. Maybe right now you're facing a Red Sea, something that is similar to the similar to the Red Sea in your life. God is able to part the waters of that Red Sea, and you'll be able to walk through it and reach where God wants you to reach. Finally, why does a good God allow suffering? Allow us to go through suffering. A good God allows us to go through suffering to point us to our need for him. Let me just, let me read Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. And I will ask the worship team to come back to the stage. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptian, Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land. And goes on and on describing, you know, the promised land. Children of Israel were, were in Egypt under oppression by the Egyptians, but they turned to God. They realized we will not get out of this situation. We need God. Hannah, the mother of prophet Samuel, Samuel, for years was despised by her co-wife who had children because she didn't have a child. And Hannah turned to God. She cried out to God. May I, I want to say to you friends, there are things that we can do in our human effort. There are things that our money can do. There are things that our education can do. There are things that our jobs can do. There are things that our friends can do. There are things that our family members can do. But there are things that God alone can do. You know, we are limited. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what power you have. As a human being, you are limited. You know, when we're going through suffering, that's when we realize, oh, we need God. Ah, let's turn to God. And even unbelievers, when things are not going well in their lives, they begin crying, wait, is there some God somewhere? And they even, they, they, they come to, they, come, they, they, they go to believers, saying, can you pray for me? I am, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering a lot. Can you pray for me? By the way, you go to the hospital, and you ask people who are sick, 
Would you like me to pray for you? None of them will say, I don't want your prayer. None of them. Because they are in need. They, they are aware of their need for God. And this is what I want to conclude with. Friends, where does a good God allow us to go through suffering? Yes, to mature our faith. To grow our faith in Him. Yes, to discipline us so we, to build our character. Yes, um, to um, point us to our need for Him. And uh, I've forgotten the other one. That's You've written it down. But listen to me. Even in suffering, God is with us. We are not forsaken. We are not forgotten. You're, God is not distant from you. God is not far away from you. Let, let me read this scripture about Jesus. God sends Jesus to die for us, to demonstrate to us that he is with us in our suffering. Isaiah chapter 53. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted by him. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that, the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus was sent by God to demonstrate to us that he is with us and he is for us. If he is with us, if he is for us, who can be and what can be against us? Jesus suffered on our behalf. He died for our sake to show us that God is with us. God is with you in that situation. God is with you in that trouble. God is with you in that, on, on that mountain. God is with you in that valley. You are not alone. Thank you for watching. Now please subscribe, like, comment, or share with a loved one because this message is what they just might need. God bless you so much and enjoy the rest of your week.